are yet to complete your CC9 and CC10, please raise your hand. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, for new member, I can agree, but for some veterans, it's kind of, kind of wondering. Too hard, too hard. Too hard. Yeah. Maybe you can share with me what is the challenge that you face when it comes to preparing CC9 and CC10. Uh, don't know what, how to face it and don't know what to say also. All right. I know the difference between inspire and pursuing. Okay. One year? Completed. Someone raised a Sorry, I think it's what happened when you're too tired. Anyway, uh, just now one of the members actually gave me a very good question. Mm -hmm. What are the difference between a persuasive speech and an inspirational speech? This is the difference. When you complete a persuasive speech. This is how the audience will react. Hmm, I do agree, what can you say? And I will proceed. What about inspirational speech? Cry. 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 <laughs> <laughs> An inspirational speech, after you do, after you present the sharing, this is normally how your audience will react. Wow! I can't wait to complete my CC10. <laughs> so you see, there's the difference between the persuasive speech as well as the inspirational speech. When you wanted to prepare a persuasive speech, normally what you need to do first is to pick a topic, a question that some people might disagree. That's where you can you know, stand firm with your points and persuade them to buy your idea, to agree with what you're about to say. Of course, if you can try to take up some topic which is very controversial, then the impact will be even stronger. But please bear in mind, if you are choosing a controversial topic, you must make sure that you are able to persuade your audience. And you need to ensure that the audience that you are about to persuade <coughs> is the right group of audience. Let me give you an example. I used to present one speech, the type which the title is Legalized Prostitution. <laughs> wow. Wow. So of course when you came across with certain groups of people, they will tell you this is illegal, especially when they're in Malaysia. But if you go to Thailand, if you go to Singapore, it's a different story. So now what you can do is you can come up with points to persuade them. <coughs> Please remember this. Persuasive speech is not win over them, but to come up with facts and figure to make them believe that whatever you say is workable. Whatever you share, share is possible to apply. Like the example I provided you just now. Why do I actually give a speech about legalized prostitution? It is because back then, our beloved government start to legalize online gambling on football. That's where you grab the opportunity of what happening around and then you create with a topic like this. And of course, you must have a point to support your speech. So what's my point? First thing first, if the government legalize this particular industry, means government will have another source of tax income. Secondly, with this industry being legalized, some people who have certain demand, they can solve it with a legal way, in which you reduce the crime rate. Thirdly, when this industry is being legalized, it means that it's under government control. So because due to this uniqueness of this particular industry, government can enforce that the worker of this industry to go through a medical checkup from time to time, in which it can help to reduce some illness. Last but not least, when this particular industry is being legalized, it means that the workers has the right and protection by the government where they can form the union <laughs> to protect themselves by being bullied by you know the middleman. So you see, by the topic itself, you might think it is not workable, it is not possible, especially when I choose a topic which is so controversial. But what if 
you can actually convince your audience that this is workable. So this is what we call a persuasive speech. And of course, apart from this, apart from getting people to agree with what you want them to agree, persuasive speech also uh, encourage them, is, is for the purpose is to encourage them to take action. Like for example, if today you are facing a group of smokers, you need to come up with facts to persuade them to quit smoking, or at least to reduce of the cigarettes that they took daily. And of course, you might come up with facts and figures. Some of you might think that this is difficult because when it is, you are not used to persuade the other individuals. If you think that controversial topic is too difficult for you to master, try to use topic which is related to our daily life. Like for example, time management. Do you realize that a lot of us actually having the challenge where we have time management issue? Traffic jam, rain, right? So you can actually take this as a topic to persuade the audience how they can overcome this issue. Like for example, you can depart half an hour earlier. You can plan your schedule ahead. You need to ensure that your car is in your best condition. So these are some of the points and facts that you can use it to inspire, uh, to persuade, not inspire, to persuade your audience to take action. So if you look back, your manual is actually stated very clearly about the objective of this particular speech. When it comes to CC9, the speech is normally is a, a, a speech where you need to state a lot of facts and <coughs> figure to encourage people to believe what they normally don't believe or to take action. So, any questions about persuasive speech? Do I need to provide facts on the other side of the, <coughs> of the coin? It depends on, on the time that you have. Try to persuade your audience with some positive points instead of points that we can use to fight them back. Try not to use some negative term. Mm -hmm. All right? So are there still any questions about uh, the preparation of persuasive speech? No? Yes? No. All right. Then I'll proceed to inspirational speech. So, Gubi, maybe you can share with me from your point of view, what is an inspirational speech? For me, uh, an inspirational speech is one that moves the person, the listener, to take some action. Okay. Or to feel. To feel. Yeah. Okay. Then, what if I, how I, I define inspirational speech as a speech that you can actually do something that you think it is not possible? You can do something which you thought it is not possible at the first place. But after my sharing or after you saw some incident, finally you believe it can be done. What are the good examples of an inspirational speech or inspirational, I uh, would say, matters? Let me take a very controversial topic. Politics. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Before the changes of our government in Penang, do you really think that transition, the, the changes of government can actually happen in Malaysia? No, hardly, right? But after the first, uh, I would say, the election of 2008, do you believe that the certain party can actually, you know, has the chance to win over another party? And you know to rule the country. Yes. This is uh, this is one of the example of how we can be inspired, right? Let's not talk about the sensitive part. We talk about a, a very recent topic. Do you really believe that in the history of Malaysia mm. that mm. we can actually oh. get our Olympic. first Olympic. gold medal in Olympic? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We believe that, you see, this is how we are being inspired. <coughs> yeah. Of 
course, we are still, you know, we need to work harder. <laughs> on the way, we are on the way. Next Olympic Games. <laughs> Probably. So you try to shift this, you use this same method to put it into your speech. How you inspire the people to take action. You see, one thing in common between these two speeches is call to action. <coughs> but CC9, persuasive speaking, is actually how you actually convince the other party by facts and figure. You tell them you need to move, otherwise you will this, this, this and this. But when it comes to insp inspirational speech, it's totally different. When you come to inspirational speech, people will not question what you share, but they will rather happy or can't wait to take action after your speech. So normally when it comes to CC10, I would encourage you to use storytelling. Because it is only when you touch someone's heart, then only the person will feel the message that you wanted to convey, and that's where they can be inspired. So of course, the CC10 is actually somehow contained a little skill of CC9. In CC9, you can go as harsh as you can, when it comes to CC10, please be lenient. Because in CC10, how you're going to inspire the other is actually how you touch his heart. And my suggestion to you is don't use you know, some quotes by some great icon, like what Steve Jobs used to say, Mao Zedong used to say, Buddha used to say. Personally, I won't encourage you to do that when you come to CC10. But rather, use your personal story or some story that you actually came across in the internet. Use story to touch people's hearts. And of course, in CC9, when you complete your speech, normally what I what most of the speakers will do is they will ask the audience, will you take action? But in CC10, we normally don't do that. We normally do that. Alright? So how you're going to inspire is a very subjective matter. Try to use some, when you craft your speech, try to use some topic that all of us are familiar with or something that just happened recently. Olympic can be one or you can use some incident like nowadays uh, there's one illness is coming, Zika. Zika. Uh, Zika. All right. As long as you can use some recent topic that most of the people are aware of it, then the impact will be stronger compared with if you try to you know, come up with some topic which is less people are aware of it. 